you stay in environments where people don't recognize the value of you, you will shrink your gift to the size of what they can stand. And that's what causes anxiety and depression and stress because you have had to shrink. I refuse to be small because you think small. I'm not shrinking my vision because you can't catch up. You either better roll with me or you gonna get rolled over. Hey Alex, did I see you that one? Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> Pat myself on the back for that one. Pat myself on the back. I forgot I sent that. All right. Uh, so me, I'm gonna pop it off because this is this is right here. I, I love it. Uh, and the thing is, I fall victim to it. And what I mean by I fall victim to it is everybody that I'm around. I mean, Alex, you know me. I mean, you know, everybody I'm around, they just think I'm just over the top. And because I'm always focused on the next thing coming. They always think I'm over the top because I'm always of the belief of I'm looking around the corner, looking at what's coming next. Everybody's just enjoying the moment, living in the moment. You know, if they don't see it on the news, it ain't it ain't reality. When we talked about, hey, interest rates going to rise when interest rates is at two and three percent. And it's going to get hard on the housing market. People are like, what are you talking about? We don't see that on the news. You're crazy. You're tripping. And yet here we are. And I see that in like even environments that I go in. And I think we had this conversation, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago. We had it, you know, at the beginning uh, when we first met. It's a big thing for me that I care about other people's finances more than they do. And that's like a big stressor for me. Like I see people just doing all the wrong things with the money or doing all the wrong things in personal finance. And, and I tell you that I, I do it and I speak about personal finance in every environment that I'm in is I do it for a selfish reason. I do it for a selfish reason. And the reason is I want, I want your finances to be on point. So, you know, you can take care of your family you know, further down the line. But the selfish reason why I do it is I tell you because I don't, when bad times do come, I don't want you to call me and ask for help. Because if if I'm your friend, then, and you know the knowledge that I have in a certain arena, just like if I have a friend that's a contractor and he tells me something wrong with my house, I'm going to believe him because he has more knowledge in that area and I'm going to address the problem right there. But when it comes to finance, I know it's all taboo. You can't talk to nobody about finance these days. But if I'm giving you the heads up of what's coming down the line and you just dismiss it. So now that means you really don't value what I'm saying or you don't care or whatever. But now I've used my time to give you the insight, give you the a forethought of what's coming up and you dismissed it. So now that means I wasted my time and you know how I feel about time. Now you didn't listen, and then now you want to use my money also. Now I gave you my time. You ain't getting my money. So that's that's the real reason why I do it. But it, it does cause a lot of stress and anxiety on me because I put too much emotion and heart and care about other people's financial situation. I do have a selfish reason behind it, but I really want people to succeed. Because I know if you come after I've had this conversation with you, and then you come to me about a financial problem that it could have been easily avoided just doing the things that I said, then it's going to break up a friendship, family ship, whatever ship it is that we thought we had because you just wasted my time and my money. But Alex, what is your thoughts on this video? I'm guilty of the same thing that you're talking about where I, it's like you, when you know something that can better someone, you would expect them to want to receive that information and better their lives. And then when they don't accept it, you you can't help but question yourself. Why do people not want this? And it's really a crazy thought because why would someone not want to have enough money to create the life that they want? And it's just learning people like learning that people are afraid to take action i think that's one of the biggest ones that i have recently really noticed is the only thing that 
holds the majority of people back is the majority of people do not want to take action. They don't, they're, they're like afraid of taking action. They're afraid of just trying it, just doing it, or they're too lazy or whatever. There's so many excuses that people make. And it's rare that you see someone actually like you give them an idea that works and they actually jump on it. It's rare that you see someone that's always jumping on. Okay, let's do it. And I've gotten to a point, I think, where, I mean, I used to get frustrated, like, ab like absolutely frustrated with people because I couldn't understand why they didn't want to better themselves or they would come to me asking me questions and I'd give them answers as to what they can do and then they didn't take it serious enough as I would take it. And so now I've gotten to a point where... I just kind of ignore those people like and like they come to me and they ask me and I just kind of shrug it off like I, I I don't put any effort into it like I might like if they catch me at the right time I might like tell them you know an answer to their question or something but I, I won't give them my time to actually you know try and mentor them unless they're like really serious and it's rare to find somebody, some people that are actually like that. And I've, I've noticed that's actually helped me save me time because so many people just don't take it serious at all. Right. And, and the part in the video where he said, and again, I find myself doing this. I mean, now I, I can see I'm, if I'm in environments that I'm in there repetitiously, like I'm there, I'm around those same type of people or same people a few times. It's like I can see it in their eyes or people, they don't want to be around me because they know the conversation is eventually going to go to finance. Not that I always bring it up. Somebody always bring it up, but I'm going to put my input in. And then I find myself trying to lower my standards just so I can be alone to get along with the group at that function. And the part in the video where he said, I'm not going to minimize myself to fit into your world. And that's the thing that I, I started doing. I mean... I've, I've had hundreds of conversations with people that just dismissed it. And then, and then I will see these people again, they could be doing, you know, a little bit worse. And then I will go back and, you know, try to get them on the right track, try to get them on the right track. But then I just seen that it was just falling on deaf ears, you know, after the third or fourth time. And then, so I just started shying away from it. And then, so now what my goal is to just try to find a way to just avoid the situations altogether. Cause like you said, I'm not going to minimize myself to fit your arena. It's you're going to get on the road with me or you're going to get rolled over. Uh, it's either you're going to get off the tracks or you're going to get ran over for me because I'm not going to stop what I'm doing. I mean, I'm fine with losing friendships and stuff like that or just not losing the friendship or just, you know, not being in those situations, not being around as much. They could say, oh, Kirby, you change. I didn't change. I'm just rather be more focused on me and do what I got to do because at the end of the day, your propensity not to listen is not about to stop me from the mission that I had. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing that I really stuck to since the beginning is I, I wasn't willing to, I wasn't willing to shrink myself to their standards, I guess you could say, like the, using the same words the guy used. Right. I wasn't willing right. to give up what I was doing to settle for something else. And um, my my wife can attest to this. I actually, before we actually started dating, I told her I'm not willing to give up my dreams and my goals just for a relationship. So I wanted to know where she was. And I'm not saying people should go out there interrogating you know their spouses but uh it worked for me <laughs> i mean i have a supportive spouse and everything but i mean it goes for everybody it goes for family it goes for friends everybody i i i don't want to make that sacrifice sacrificing where i could be in life because i'd rather stick with this circle that's not something i want hold on one second because you said you said something very fine there you you're right Nobody should be interrogating their wife, but this is a conversation that you should have before they become your spouse. 
Right. Because now if you try to interrogate them after, you know, it's okay to get on the same page and try to get on the same page. But these are conversations you should have beforehand. For the life of me, I never understood how people marry like, oh, yeah, she she only cares about money. Well, you, you should have known that before you got married. Or he only cares about money. He only wants to spend, spend, spend. He should have knew that before you got married. And then for the life of me, people want to blame their spouses for their financial situation. These people was the same way before you got married to them. I mean, could some people lie and try to hide it? Yeah, but you should be doing deep financial audits of people that you're saying you're going to spend the rest of your life with before, before you ever walk down the aisle. For the life of me, people, you get married, you tying assets, you're tying credit, you're tying debt uh, in with somebody and you don't know the situation they're in before you say, I do. That should be number one conversation. So no, you shouldn't interrogate your spouse. You should be having these conversations before they become your spouse. So Alex, when you told me the story and you shared it with the group, when you tell the story about the conversation you had with Dwight, I loved it. I know everybody else probably looking at it like, what the heck? Why would you do that? And you will have, you know, successful marriage for 50 million years and beyond. And for everybody that don't know, Alex's wife is a hundred times better person than he is. I mean, she is like, if, if you, for the guys out there or the mothers out there that want their sons to marry an ideal person, Alex's wife is the ideal person. How Alex got her, I have no clue. But he did the right thing. <laughs> My bad, Alex. I just had to point that out. Yeah, it was funny because I remember you had told me, never play the lottery because you already won. But it's true. I mean, having, and we made a video on this, having a supportive spouse can really accelerate your growth, your financial goals, and all of that. I mean, and it's important. I mean, like you said, it, it was easier. I would have rather had, you know, have that conversation over again and again that difficult conversation when it really wasn't difficult for me because I knew where my mind was set but I'd rather have that conversation than deal with years of problems and issues and all kinds of things I mean it can really because that was me screening her basically like I knew I wasn't in a crazy place in my life I wasn't doing anything wrong in my life I was just focus on a path, work, trying to save money. And I had goals to build and that was it. Like I knew I wasn't going to ruin her life. So I want to make sure she wasn't going to ruin my life. And that's really all it was. But with all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, uh, leave us a comment down below, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.